Welcome back friends to another video and even if this looks like I've been on vacation I mean I wish but I wasn't. The only thing that I did is leveling up my setup and now it looks like I'm sweating and I am because it's quite hot. But this is just the off topic news. The interesting part is that in this video we are going to talk about the security of server actions in their current state. And that really is some quite interesting stuff, so let's not lose time and jump right into it. So the first thing that I did is create a new Next.js application with the very newest version. I then went ahead and opened it up in my editor. The first thing I did then is I opened up a new terminal. And within this terminal, I ran npm run dev such that the dev server starts. And when we open this up, we get the standard starting page. And then I went to the page DSX and removed everything but the main tag. And inside, I simply created a button with an onclick listener. And since an onclick happens on the client, this is a client component. The resulting page then looked like this. And when I click the button, it just says clicked. Now let's get into the interesting part. So our main page currently is this one. And this one is a client component. Now, as you've seen in my other videos, server actions need to be defined and ran on the server. So we cannot define them here in our client component. So we want to follow up what we did in the other two videos. We want to create a new component, which we call just action button. And we will move the button to this new component. So our new action button component will be a client component because we will have an onclick listener and we need to export it and we call it action button. And then we simply copy paste our button from here to here. And finally, we make the page a server component by removing use client. We import the action button component that we just created and then we use the action button component here. So now our page is a server component, which means we can define server actions inside of the server component. And now watch out. We want to simulate passing secret variables. So imagine the following. Somewhere in our application, we have something like get database password. And this will just grab the password from somewhere, for example, an environment variable, and just say like super secret password. All right. And now let's do something super insecure, but super obvious. Let's fetch the password and then add the password to a data attribute, for example, data password. All right, let's jump over to the browser. And now if we check the inspector, you will obviously see the password in here, right? Because we passed it to the HTML. All right, so far so bad, right? <laughs> so, but if we don't pass that password, then it will not appear here for obvious reasons. So that's safe. And even if we use console log in this component, that's still safe because if we lock this password, it will be locked on the server. So if we go to the front end and check it, there's no password. So it's not locked on the front end. So that's just fine. We have a server component and we fetch a password and we console lock that password. And even though I wouldn't lock passwords at all, this isn't per se insecure because, well, it's not seen on the front end. So all good. Now let's go one step ahead. If the password is fetched on the server, and we use server actions, that should be fine, right? And the interesting answer is it isn't that easy, but let me explain. So let's create a server action. We just name it do something with database. And to mark it as a server action, we need to use the use server directive. And now let's do console log password again. This should still be fine, right? We get the password on the server and we lock the password on the server. All right, let's make the action button receive a onclick listener. And because it's TypeScript, I need to give it type. 
we'll just say it's a function that doesn't return anything. And in the onclick listener, we will trigger the server action with start transition as seen in my previous video. So we will use is pending action and start transition. And then we'll just say use transition. And now start transition and call the past onclick listener. So nothing new here. All right. Last thing we need to pass the do something with database to the onclick listener. Okay, that's it. Now let's jump over to our page. Ah, okay, one last thing. I forgot the async. Okay, so now we're here. So let's click it. Let's check the network inspector. Okay, so the server action was called. That means on our lock, we're seeing super secret password, right? It's on the server, so it's not a biggie, right? Well, it is. So basically what we are sending to the server, not receiving, sending, so the request is the super secret password. So it is on the front end, really. It is being seen in the network tab. So basically anyone could just grab it. And this is not something like, oh, well, they have a major bug and they should be more careful or whatever. The thing is, maybe they should document it better, but it can be very well explained why this happens. And I can also explain you how to basically not have this problem. Let's get into it. And I promise it's not that hard. You just have to carefully listen now. All right. So what happens? So this here is a component, right? And when you visit the page, the following happens. First step. This function is called. It doesn't matter if you're fetching a password or whatever. This function is called and it generates a value. And in our case, this value is a password, but it could be anything. Then comes the next step. We create a function that uses a value which was generated outside of the function. So it's context bound. This function needs to get a value from the current context which isn't part of the function. Then this action, or better said, a reference to this action is passed to the component such that the component can trigger it on click. And the problem here with this is that this thing isn't static. So every time a request comes in, every time this page is visited, this function could potentially return a new value. For example, if this wasn't a database password, but a date. So if I visit the page now, the date must be correct. And if I visit the page in two minutes, the date must be correct having two minutes advanced or even seconds. And that means Next.js needs a way to pass variables that are created inside of the component and are being passed to a server action to remember those, to remember the actual value of that variable at that exact point in time. And in the current state of server actions, the way that it's done is that Next.js also sends this information to the front end so that it can give it back to the server action when the server action is being called. And I'm not saying this couldn't be done on the server at all. I mean, there are architectural solutions for something like that. For example, instead of passing the actual variable, they could pass something like an ID and then the variable is stored in the server and so on and so forth. But that would mean a lot of things would have to be stored on the server. So the simple answer is basically you are creating a variable outside of the server action here. And Next.js doesn't know if that's static, if that's person bound or, or whatever or whatnot. And Next.js cannot just call that function. So Next.js can't just like put that function somewhere else because if you like, for example, let's just, let's just literally do that. Let's just put that function here, right? That wouldn't work because it, it wouldn't know the password, right? Because we put the password inside of the component and then defined a function that basically lives inside of that component it needs to pass what the function is using. And this isn't a problem if you simply make it part of that function, right? Then this isn't a problem. So I can show you. 
And this is basically one solution. Make the function independent. And this is also a general recommendation for you. So let's see it. Now, if I click it, let's check the request. There's nothing in the request being sent because the function is independent, right? The function can be called without knowledge from the outside. But in the old version, the function needs knowledge from the outside at the point of basically runtime. Sure thing, this isn't intuitive. It isn't. But it's clear when you understand what's happening. But actually, there's another cool thing you can do to avoid things like these at all. Because Next.js allows you to externalize server actions. That means you can simply create a file which contains all of your actions. For example, my database actions. And then we just copy over that whole thing to my database actions. And we have to export this action. And also we have to grab this one. And now instead of using your server inside of that action, you can just put it at top of the file. And now everything that is exported as a function is considered to be an action. That's cool. So now we can simply import this. Now we save it and we jump to the browser and see if it still works. Let's refresh the page. Click the button, see the request is being done without the secret and the server tells us the password. All good. So that's pretty much it about server action security at its current state. We don't know the future. We don't know what will happen with this issue, but it could as well be that they consider removing it from the component and only allow the externalized version, which would remove the issue all along. But I don't know, and you don't know. And you now know how to circumvent this issue, which is good. That's it for today. That's it for the video. Enjoy your week and see you next time.